This video explains how to merge multiple CSV files using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. For this video, we first need to create some example data frames, as you can see in lines 2 to 12 of the code. So after running lines 2 to 4 of the code, our first data frame is created and you can see this data frame appearing at the top right which is called data1 and if you click on this data frame you can see the structure of our first data frame so as you can see it contains six rows and the three columns id x1 and x2 then we can create our second data frame in lines 6 to 8 and this data frame is appearing at the top right as well and if you click on this data frame you can see that this data frame also contains six rows with different ids and the two columns y1 and y2 and our third data frame can be created with lines 10 to 12. And if you click on this data frame, another window is opened, which shows that our third data frame contains two rows, an ID column, and the columns C1 and C2. Now, if we want to merge CSV files, we first should export these data frames as CSV files to our computer. And we can do that using the write.csv function, as you can see in lines 14 to 19 of the code. So after running these lines of code, our three data frames are exported as CSV files to a folder on our desktop. And you can see these files in our folder, my folder. So if you open this folder, you can see that currently there are three CSV files, data one, data two, and data three and each of these CSV files contains one of our example data frames. Now, this is the situation where we're at. So now the question is, how can we merge these three CSV files in our studio? And for this, we can use two different approaches. And the first approach is based on those three packages, the dplyr, the plyr, and the read r packages. I have installed these packages already, so for that reason I'm just going to load them with lines 25 to 27. So after running these lines of code, the functions of these packages are loaded. And then in the next step, I'm combining these three data sets in a new data frame using the list files, the lapply and the bind rows functions. Please note uh, that all this code is also shown in the description of this video. So since this code is relatively complex, you might prefer to just copy and paste the code from the description. However, if you run these lines of code, you can see that a new data frame called data all is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data frame, you can see that a large window is opened. And this window shows our combined data set. And as you can see, the first column is the ID column, which contains the different IDs of our three data frames. Then you can see in the first six rows, the values of the data frame data one are appearing. In the seventh to the 12th row, the values of the data frame data two are appearing. And in the last two rows, the values of the data frame data three are appearing. So with this code, we have combined our three data sets by rows. However, we have not merged these data frames by ID yet, because you can see some of the IDs are overlapping. So for instance, the IDs four, five, and six are appearing in the first data set as well. And for that reason, we might prefer to combine the values of these IDs in the same row. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 36 of the code. So as a first step, we need to install and load the per package, as you can see in lines 36 and 37. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 37 of the code. And then in the next step, I'm using the list files, the lapply and the reduce functions. And I'm specifying that I want to apply a full join by our ID column. So after running lines 39 to 42 of the code, another data set is created, which is called data join. And if you click on this data frame on the top right, you can see that a new window is opened. 
And this window shows all our values. However, we have merged our data frames based on the ID column. So as you can see in lines four, five, and six, we have overlaps between the three data sets because the IDs five and six are appearing in all the three data frames. And for that reason, these two rows do not have NA values and the ID number four is appearing in the data frames data one and data two. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.